have what's called an auto-limited slip differential on the two-wheel drive version. When one wheel starts losing traction, the engine, well, the computer will rev power, or the diff will rev power to the wheel that has traction, taking power away from the one that's spinning. What's that one? And, and gets the vehicle going forward. Should that wheel start spinning, it will now say, over here, bring the vehicle forward. And back and forth it goes. But the problem with, uh, the problem with that is, is how do I engage the auto LSD in a two-wheel drive platform? What's the procedure? Because let's say we have two driveways. Over here is Mr. Driveway with the RAV4 with the snow up in his beers in an all-wheel drive. And um, I'm over here at the two-wheel drive going, hey, what should I do? What should he do? How do I, do, how do I get the uh, auto LSD to come on, guys? Hit the traction control button. Okay? That disables traction control. Why am I disabling traction control, huh? If you pick up, you seem to know. Remember when I uh, talked about off-roading, what do you need for off-roading? You need traction and momentum. <clears throat> so you know when you get into a snowbank and you just, on uh, your old cars, you just off I go. Traction control stops that brain from happening because it's retarding the engine power. So you're getting that cut out all the time. All the time. You need that all the time. So traction control, by turning it off, allows the power to stay constant. It doesn't interrupt the power from the engine. That is momentum. The traction, the braking still happens. It'll still switch from side to side, but I have constant feed of power. So you need to make sure, because some customers want a two-wheel drive RAV4 only, for budgetary reasons, but some may want a tr something truckish, but they need to know how to uh, extricate themselves from situations. Okay? Are you okay with that? Auto slip. I don't know what's that. No. Uh, on the front wheel drive? Off the top of my head, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay, good. You guys are on the right track. Blind spot monitoring. Uh, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert piggyback the same systems. There's some sensors in the uh, in Inside the bumpers, and what it's looking for is the zones where I can't see the car. So if you picture this as a car, the rear view mirror has this zone, the side view mirrors have just on the, each side of the rear view mirrors, but in here, basically from a straight, if you draw a straight line from the side of the vehicle and about to the B pillar, that's the blind spot. That is where the system is looking for vehicles to happen. Now, rear cross traffic alert uses the same componentry. But they operate in two different ways. What are those ways? Actually, you know. You tried it yet? Anybody tried uh, experimenting with VSM and RCTA? Yeah, yeah, what it does is uh, as a car is coming while it's going under a certain speed, um, when the car is going away, it will not pick it up. Right. Okay. What's happening with the mirrors, though, Eric? They act differently depending on which system is telling you something. Uh, I'll just make there. Okay. The screen. You know that there's some icons in the mirrors, the two little cars with the, beef, the laser beams going between the two. Blind spot monitoring will illuminate the mirrors, telling you there's a car. It could be one at a time or both at a time if there's two cars beside you. It's a, it stays on, the light stays on. As soon as that vehicle leaves the blind spot, the light turns off. Now, if you start hitting the signal when the light is on steady tone, what does it start doing? They'll actually start flashing at you, okay? You haven't seen the light staying on. Now I'm going to flash at you because you're hitting the turn signal, but there's a car there. I'm assuming you don't see it. If you keep going, the assembly will not bail you out. You will hit that car if you ignore the flash. It does not override. It, does not override. it doesn't steer you back or help you in any way. You are still the master, okay? It will flash, but there is no sound, grasshoppers. No sound. Rear cross traffic alert uses the same icons, but it makes a sound. And how rear cross traffic alert works is, when I put the vehicle in reverse, for some conditions, and I'll give you what they are, the vehicle has to be in reverse. Rear cross traffic alert wakes up and starts doing this constantly. If it sees, as long as your vehicle is within 0 to 6 kilometers an hour, so you're not blasting your way out of a parking spot, Okay? If your vehicle is 0 to 6 kilometers an hour, 
And approaching vehicles are between 8 and 28 kilometers an hour. It will do a calculation that says, at the speed you're coming, at the speed he's coming, you're going to T-bone. And it will flash the mirrors at the same time and make a sound. Okay? So you hear a tone. That's the difference between blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic, is if there's an audible warning with a blind spot. Okay? So that is, must be in reverse. Zero to six, your car. Eight to 28, the other cars. And it's about 20 meters away, is the detection zone across here. Okay, 20 meters on each side. Is there any reason why there's no sort of audio warning for the blind spot monitor? Probably because if I'm on the highway, that would be annoying as heck. If I'm on the 401, and it's beeping at me constantly. But wouldn't it only be when you're signal on? Um, you, could, you could conceivably put a warning tone with, with, with the signal on it, yeah. but they didn't. I'm not sure. There must be a reason. Yeah. yeah. Great question. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Now, on the blind spot, uh, on the rear cross traffic alert, it will not pick up people, a jogger, a bicycle. The object must have mass. The minimum it will pick up is a 125cc motorcycle. And higher. So I tested this with my scooter. I drive a Vespa, 200cc Vespa. It works. It, will, it picked it up. In addition to a car, of course. Okay? Any questions on that? Where'd you buy your Vespa? Uh, the one in Toronto. Did you swear at Vespa? Sir? Okay, so I tried it on my scooter and my motorcycle and a car. Work. Okay. Any questions? Perfect. Lane departure alert. You will get an opportunity to use this. Where is the LDA button? How do you activate it? Do you know what answer? Center clock where that is. By the clock, on the right side of the clock. On the left side of the clock, you will see uh, the parking sensor button. That's the cone with the laser beams. Okay? That's the other. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, if you want to turn that feature off, that's the button. Okay. Lane departure alert works by using piggybacking the auto high beam camera. What the camera is looking for are lines in the road, and when it's illuminated, it will, if it picks up one line on the left, it will just flash the, the left bar or both bars at the same time. Whatever it sees, it will indicate. And basically what happens is there's all the operating conditions, so you can see what the lights mean. What, how a lane departure assist works is it doesn't have a camera that waits for the tire to hit the line and then warns you. It basically does a calculation using the auto high beam camera by steering angle. So the steering is very busy, very important on this new RAV4. It dictates sport mode and it dictates lane departure. If it calculates that you're steering at such an angle that you're going to hit this line, it will beep before you hit it. It's just making an assumption. If you correct, it won't do anything. It will not warn you by beeping. Okay? So there's all the operating conditions and what the lines mean. Uh, you'll be using lane departure on the limited tech package that I have for you today. Okay? Um, power rear door we covered. You guys know how to do it. Um, any questions? Okay. Uh, we're going to have lunch as soon as it gets out. So have I, what I want you to do now is take your letters and arrange them. Now that you've got all the knowledge that you have thus far this morning, I want you to rearrange your letters and put them in the second box for 2013, Rev4, on page one of your workbook. Has your impression of the vehicle changed? Is technology, now that you know about the technology, is it now more important to you? So have your perceptions of the vehicle changed? Okay. Any reason why so it would not put most of this technology in some of the lower packages? Oh, Just really, is that really all it is? Yeah. yeah. It's a finite price point, right? Because I believe, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, uh, the MSRP even on this new one is lower than all the MSRPs. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So every MSRP is lower, lower than the trim. Uh, what we're trying to do is suck you up through the grades. I think that's right. right. You've got to go right to the top to get all of this stuff. To get this yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Also, I mean, like, even on an XLE, if it was even just like something like, like a blind like spot watering system, which everybody seems to be talking about now. Yeah, is that something that might uh, That's probably a question you've ever done. Potentially, be able to be working on it. So, looking at 
extra on that is that's probably something that you'll see gravitating towards yes. minor model change. Uh, what you're trying to do when you price these things out, like I'm going to start at the base one, which is like 23 cents a yeah. You get $850 for a stock. This is in the right, and they drop the price of all that